ことできないよね僕は、うん、いや中毒ですよ僕町の。僕は基本的にはあの歩くの大変ですよ。やっぱりむしろあんたもほとんどん野良犬だとつまり表通り行くとすぐ裏通り入ってねいろいろ裏通りばっかりこういろいろしてると。Hello there. I wanted to pair my previous video on Anders Peterson with this exploration into the work of Daido Moriyama. Because there are some strong similarities in the way that they work and also the type of images that they produce. They both use point and shoot cameras and they have a practice of walking the streets and reacting spontaneously to whatever they see. They both shoot a huge number of images and much of their creative process happens during the editing stages. Like Peterson, Mariam is a restless traveler. And has created works in cities around the world like New York, Barcelona, and LA. When you watch videos of them working, you can see that they've got a focused, hungry look as they prowl the streets for images that go to the heart of the space that they're working in. Their unsettled natures drive them to unearth a record of brutal beauty from the street. Capturing scenes that were considered taboo or neglected by mainstream society, Mariama sought out the marginalized and hidden aspects of urban life, documenting subcultures, back alleys, and the surreal. His images typically contain harsh contrasts, a lot of grain, and tilted angles, so he's probably the polar opposite to, say, Ansel Adams. He's not interested in technical perfection. He only cares what the image feels like. Peterson is probably driven by the heart and the gut, while Mariama was also motivated by a need to explore the medium of photography itself. Especially in his early years, he attempted to redefine the role of the photographer and photography within society. It's difficult to pigeonhole his work. There's a conceptual element to his photographs. He's questioning what is a photograph. But he's not answering directly. It's a non linear response. He's showing us that his rapid fire shooting from the hip approach results in images that, when sequenced, create a more realistic sense of how we as humans piece together all the fragments of information that we're exposed to. We're never presented with a perfectly composed and frame impression of the world. We're cobbling together multiple splinters of information, and our brains work hard to create order and meaning out of these. In a way, his work may seem violent and provocative because we're not presented with a neat story. But if we are able to let go of the idea of the linear narrative, Then we can tune into possibly a more authentic reality that emerges from his visual stream of consciousness. One can't separate Mariama's work from the world that he was born into. He entered the world during the Second World War and he was six years old when the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. For the next eight years of his life, his country was occupied by American forces. His twin brother died when he was two and his father when he was three. The Japanese way of life was permanently transformed, and the occupier's consumer ethos became assimilated into Japanese culture. Moriyama and other rebellious young artists were caught up in this love hate affair with America and its pop culture. He was drawn to the avant garde but feared the corrosive effects of rampant consumerism. He joined a collective called Vivo that was attempting to push photography into a new direction. At that time, the accepted tradition of well composed documentary images dominated publications. This group considered themselves to be part of a revolution, to break down and rebuild society, and their weapon was art. In the late 60s, he co founded Provoke magazine and contributed to the second and third issues. 
The publication folded after just three issues, but it had a profound effect on Japanese photography for decades to come. It laid the foundation for a completely new way of approaching the medium and conceiving photographic expression. This enterprise became known as the Provoke Movement. In Provoke II, his essay Eros centers around an unknown woman. He was concerned that the more society becomes consumerist, the more real desires are corrupted. He was influenced by the immediacy of William Klein's photographs from his books on New York, Tokyo, Moscow, and Rome. In Provoke III, he was strongly influenced by America as a whole and Warhol particularly. Mariama photographed supermarket shelves, but instead of focusing on the glamorization or glorification of consumerism, Mariama's images are grainy, hard to decipher, and his soup cans become almost abstracted. His work is continuously calling our attention back to the struggle between tradition and modernism. In his book, A Hunter, published in 1972, he was inspired by the road trips of Jack Kerouac. He traveled around Japan and hunted down images in a similar way to how Kerouac was hunting for the 1950s soul of America. Moriyama is playing a continuous cat and mouse game with his prey, repeatedly capturing it for a fraction of a second, then letting it go, never quite providing a conclusion. The book contains many of Mariama's most recognized images, including the growling dog. He's taken on the behaviors of the stray dog, wandering the streets and seeking out his next target. His idealism began to fade. He was having a crisis of faith in the medium photography and in himself as an artist. He was realizing that photography couldn't really change the world in the way that he had believed that it could. For this publication, Farewell Photography, he gathered up rejected photographs, film ends and scraps that were lying about and handed them to a friend to put together. At that time, he saw this publication as the end of his photographic career. The book has no logical storyline. It's more meditation on photography as a medium and an object. We see things like the edges of the film and scratches on the surface on the negative. Farewell Photography is a radical photo book. The more Moriyama attempted to erase himself from the process, the more he strengthened the presence of his artistic thought process. This publication has been described as one of the most important events in the history of modern photography because he's taken the deconstruction of photography as a medium to its almost absolute conclusion. The images show nothing in particular, and together they tell no story. But as a collection of fragmented exposures, they get close to defining the essential material aspects of photographic production. His contribution as an artist hadn't been recognized in the 70s, and he became disheartened and depressed. He didn't touch a camera for almost a decade. He became addicted to sleeping pills and was on a downward spiral. Two editor friends who were concerned for his well-being commissioned him to do some images and he slowly got himself back onto the street. Just as the camera had plunged him into an existential void, it pulled him back from the brink of self-obliteration. His work became less focused on trying to change the world, but he still continued with his prolific production. In the following decades, his work became more self-exploratory although he continues to probe the essence of photography itself. In a similar way that Anders Peterson explores urban environments in his City Diary series, Mariama produced collections of photographs in his record magazines. He's already produced 30 of them and intends to do more. Mariama photographs continuously using small digital cameras. He doesn't bother looking through the viewfinder. He mainly shoots in black and white because he feels that monochrome enhances abstraction and symbolism. He reacts instinctively and uses the camera as if it was a notepad. He sees photography as fossils of light and time. 
Sequencing is fundamental to understanding his photography. His individual images can be arresting, but you are only getting a glimmer of the whole picture. The images freely associate with each other in publications in order to produce a dark, mysterious portrait of urban life. His collections don't attempt to explain. They are jarring, shocking, and at the same time reveal the concealed beauty within the mundane. Mariam is now 85 years old, and his main concern is that his health will get in the way of him producing images. During the past six decades working on the street, he's never actually answered the question about the essence of the medium of photography. But his life work has been a constant and honest response to the question. Throughout his career, he's followed the Japanese aesthetic of wabi-sabi, to find beauty in imperfection and simplicity, and to recognize the impermanent nature of earthly things. Thanks for staying with me, and please like and subscribe. See you next time. うろうろうろ野良犬か野良猫みたいにさ時には虫みたいにね